Okay, we continue with, uh, this is part three of the Algebra 1, part three, Algebra 1 release test May 2021 for the STAR exam. And in this test, we're going to continue with number 35, and we're going to go up to the very last one, number 54. And uh, if you stay to the end of this, I have a special message for you at the end of this video. So... Let's go ahead and start with number one. Problem number one has to do with rules of exponents. It says, which expression is equivalent to 15a to the 0, b squared, c to the 34th power, times 3a to the 16th, b to the negative 29, c to the 0, for all values of a, b, and c where the expression is defined? The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply 15 times 3, 15 times 3 is 45. So the numerical part is 45. So I can eliminate answer A and C because that says 18. And so now I need to figure out uh, A to the 0 times A to the 16th. When we're multiplying, we add the exponents. 0 plus 16, that's A to the 16th. B squared times B to the 29th. So we add 2 plus the negative 29. That would be B to the negative 27th power, and then C34 times C0, that's 34 plus 0. <clears throat> so we have this. Now, if you have a negative exponent, all you have to do, the rule for negative exponent is take the reciprocal or bring this to the denominator, and that makes that positive. And so we're looking for an answer that says 45 a to the 16th, C to the 34th power over B to the 27th, which is answer D. That was for number 35. Number 36, a contractor's total earnings from a job include a fixed amount plus an amount based on the number of hours worked. The values in the table represent the linear relationship, so this is a linear function, between the number of hours worked and the contractor's total earnings. What is the rate of change, rate of change, of the contractor's total earnings. When it says rate of change, what are we looking for? We're looking for slope. And it is a linear relationship. So all we have to do is find the slope here. And you can take, uh, if these are the x's, these are the y's, you can subtract any y values. Let's say we subtract this one minus this one, just an example. Then I subtract this one minus this one for the x's. So uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, formula for slope. I'm going to take 370 minus 20, and I'm going to divide that by 40 minus 0. So 370 minus 20, that's 350. So I have 350, and I'm going to divide that by 40. So that means that in... 40 hours, he makes 350. If you divide 350 divided by 40 using your calculator, you're going to get 875. 875 is the answer, and it looks like answer F. What is the solution set for 2x squared plus 15 equals to negative 11x? You can graph this using your graphing calculator, um, and you can find the zeros. So if you were to graph y is equal to 2x squared, add 11x on both sides, so you could bring it over, and then plus 15. You could graph that, and you could find the zeros. Um, and if you do that, um, I think you're going to get answer D, because we just did that. Now, you could also factor this. So let's say if we try to factor this out, 2x squared could be 2x times x. And you could have um, factors of 15 could be 5 and 3. So 5 and 3. And since that's a plus, we're going to have a plus here and a plus there. And then what you need to do is always check using FOIL and see if that works out. So the outer here is 6x, 
and the inner here is 5x. And when you add the outer and inner, it gives you this 11x. And we already know that 5 times 3 gives us this 15. And of course, 2x times x gave us a 2x squared. So that means that 2x plus 5 equals to 0. 2x plus 5 is equal to 0. And also, x plus 3 equals to 0. So what we're doing is set each factor equal to 0 to find the zeros. So here, x would be negative 3 if you subtract uh, 3 on both sides. And here you subtract 5. 2x is equal to negative 5. And then divide by 2. So negative 5 halves or negative 2.5. So that is correct. That was the correct answer. And uh, we can move on to number 38 then. Number 38 is an exponential function. And you're given a table with some points for the graph of exponential function. So if you notice the value of f of x or y is increasing. And so if you have an increasing um, exponential function, that means that b is greater than 1, where you have an exponential function a times b raised to the x power. And this would be an exponential function like that, a times b to the x. So b has to be greater than 1, and that's this multiplier, which is inside the parentheses. So this one here is 2 thirds, so I don't think it could be g. And this one here, j, is 2 thirds, so I don't think it could be that one. So it's either f or h. So if x is 2, we should get 36. So using your calculator, you can plug in uh, into this one if x is 2. So you're going to have 16 times 3 halves squared. That would be 16 times 9 over 4. And using your calculator, you're going to get that this is 36, which is correct. So that means the answer should be f. So you could actually use your calculator and try each one of these and see if it gives you that table. Or you can graph these on your calculator and then look for a table of values and match up your values with that table that is given. So there's multiple ways, different ways of doing this. Maybe the easiest for some students is just to plug in values of x here into the equations that are given, f, g, h, j, and come up with those values. Number 39, it says, which statement best represents the equation of the line shown on the grid and its relationship to the x-axis? Well, the x-axis is horizontal, and this line is horizontal, and it crosses the y-axis somewhere between 2 and 3. It looks like y is equal to 2.5. So, since it crosses the y-axis at 2.5, then we could say that that's a horizontal line, y equals 2.5, and it is parallel, parallel to the x-axis. So look at your answer choices. Um, it can't be A, and it can't be B, because it says x equals 2.5, x is a vertical line. So C and D both say two, y is 2.5. Uh, one is parallel and one's perpendicular. We're looking for parallel, so the answer has to be C. That was for number 39. Number 40 says, which expression is equivalent to 9n squared minus 25? Well, 9n squared is a perfect square. That's 3n times 3n. And 25 is a perfect square, minus 5 and plus 5. So what we're doing here is we're doing a squared minus b squared, difference of squares, and that is equal to a minus b times a plus b. So in this case, it looks like the answer should be g. Now, uh, since, this can't, since you are using the calculator, you can actually graph this, y equals to that, and graph this, and you'll see the same thing in the same table. And you could actually graph it, any of these. Or you could use a number for n, and run it through each of the equations. There's several ways of doing this, but you can use your graphing calculator if you do not want to factor this one. That was for number 40. Number 41 says, which linear function has an, has an x-intercept of negative 1, crosses the x-axis at negative 1, and a y-intercept of 5, crosses the y-axis at 5? So, 
we're looking for one that crosses the y-axis at 5. This one crosses at 5, and this one crosses at 5. But we're looking for a y-intercept of negative 1. This one's negative 1. This is a positive 1. So the answer has to be D. So there's two parts to this, x-intercept and y-intercept. And just carefully look through each one of these. I ruled out A and C because those did not have a y-intercept of 5. This one had a negative 5, and this one had a negative 1. So those are incorrect. So by the process elimination, we get to answer D for number 41. Number 42, the value of y is directly proportional to the value of x. So then we could say that y is directly proportional to x, y equals kx. When x is 3.5, what the value of y is 14. So when y is 14, x would be 3.5. So we could find what k is if we divide by 3.5. It looks like k is equal to Using your calculator, 14 divided by 3.5 is exactly 4. So now we have y is equal to 4x. What is the value of y when x is 28? So now we can answer the question. We already know that k is 4. It's 4 times the value of x. In this problem, x is 28. So using your calculator, y is going to be 4 times the value of 28, which would be... 112. And with this one, you would record your answer and then bubble in your answers. 1, 1, 2, and so on. Bubble in. <clears throat> okay, so the next one says, uh, a quadratic function is graphed on the grid. And so you see the quadratic function there. And it says, which answer choice best represents the domain and range? So the domain and range for a quadratic function. The domain would be the x values, and for a quadratic function, the domain is always all reals, all real numbers, because you can use any real number for x. If you have y equals x squared, you will get a value for y. And the range depends on the graph. So in this case, we're going to look at the range, which are the y values, and it goes all the way down to 5. And so anything above 5, you could have y values of 6, 7, 8, 9, and starting at 5. So we would say then that the range would be y would be greater than or equal to 5. And so let's look at our answer, answer choices. The only one that has domain all real numbers is b. And it already says the range here is y is greater than or equal to 5, which is what we had here. So if you knew that the domain is all real numbers for quadratic equations, then you could answer this question just knowing that. Because the domain is, this is the only one that has domain all real numbers. That was for number 43, asking about a quadratic function, domain and range. Okay, number 44, you have a t So you're to select the function that represents f. Which function represents f in this problem? So you could graph these, f, g, h, j, and look at the table and see which one of those has those tables. You could find the slope, or you could plug in some points. I know that x is 2 when y is 0, so... Um, when x equals to 2, the value of the function y would be 0. So if x is 2 on f, 2 minus 2 is 0. So this one works. Um, this one doesn't work. And 2 minus 2, 0. That gives me 0. So f and g work. j doesn't work. So many times you'll see where two answers don't work. And so now it's between f and h. And then I can pick another number. Let's say I can pick uh, when x is 5. I should get y is 78. So if I take a look at the first one, um, 26 times 5 minus 2, that's 3. 3 times 26 is 78. So the answer for number 44 is F. 
Now you can use your calculator and do all the calculations and plug in numbers. You can graph those and look at the table and see which one gives you those tables. So there's many ways to do this one. Do this one the easiest way for you. Maybe using the calculator is better for you. Number 45, which expression is equivalent to x squared plus 10x plus 24? And so we can factor this. x squared would be x times x. Factors of 24 would be 6 and 4. That add up to 10. And it looks like x plus 4 and x plus 6 would work. And that would be answer D. Now, alternatively, you could graph this. You could graph this as y equals to that, and you could graph this, and you would have the same thing. You could also look at the tables. So plug in values. There's many ways that you can do 45. The easiest way might be to factor this one straight out like that. 45, the answer was D. Number 46, which graph best represents the solution set y is less than or equal to 3 fourths x minus 4? So they all have a minus 4 y-intercept. We're looking at less than or equal to, which means that would include a solid line. So it could be this one or this one, but it cannot be this one because of the dashed line. It cannot be that one. So once again, we rule out two, and it's possible two answers. Less than or equal to would be everything below the line. So it's going to be this one here. So the answer for number 46 should be F, BF. And you can always try a point, pick a point in this region. So we know that it is not in this area. So we pick a point that is in this area down here somewhere. Let's say uh, when X is four, Y is negative four. So we'll pick a point right around four, negative four. So we're gonna use a point four, negative four when x is 4, y would be a negative 4. And we want to know if that is less than or equal to 3 fourths times 4 minus 4. And so 3 fourths of 4 is 3. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So is negative 4 less than or equal to a negative 1? And the answer is yes. So that is true. So that means that this is the correct answer. The correct answer here was f. Number 47, we have the scatter plot and the table show the weekly profit in dollars earned from the sale of pastries at seven different prices. The data can be modeled by a quadratic function. So if you want to use your calculator, you can use quadratic regression for this. Uh, we'll try to do this without a calculator since I can't show my calculator on the screen right here. I do know that this will go something like this. So it's a quadratic equation. And um, if we have ax squared plus bx plus c, and if a is less than zero, it opens down like this. So I'm looking for a negative leading coefficient for this, which could be either b or d. So I don't think it could be c and I don't think it could be a. So it's either B or D. Now, with B or D, they both have the same y-intercept of negative 334. Okay? So when X is 0, you're going to have a negative 334, which would be somewhere way down here. Uh, now, it cannot be D because you don't have an X term. That would be... It would be just like this. If there's no x term, it would be symmetrical about the y-axis. So it has to be answer B. Now you can use your calculator and graph answer B. And th these numbers here will be close to that but on the table, but not be exact. Because, again, this is a scatter plot of value. So it's not exact, but they'll be close. So we're looking for the data that can best be modeled by this quadratic function. So I think the answer has to be B for number 47. Number 48, which expression is equivalent to 35M squared minus 63? Okay, so 
uh, we can factor a common factor here. 7 goes into 35 and 63. So we could factor out a common factor of 7. And 7 to 35 is 5. You have an m squared. And then 7 goes into 63 9 times. So you can quickly check by taking 5 times that. It gives you 35 m squared. And 7 times 5m squared is 35m squared, and 7 times the minus 9 would be minus 63, which gives us the original equation. So the answer should be f. 7 times 5m squared minus 9. You can check also with your calculator by graphing these here and compare it to the original uh, expression. You can also plug in a number for m and make sure which one matches that. You could use a number like uh, 1.5 or 2 or something like that for M, and then match this with that one. So there's multiple ways you can do number 48. Number 49, they're asking for a part of the exponential function is graph, which inequality best represents the domain. Now remember the domain, they're asking for X values. Remember, do, main, dora, so you have domain and range. So this is x and this is y, do, ra. So domain, they're asking for x values, so you can eliminate anything that has a y. b is out, d is out. And again, it's 50-50, a or c. Well, where does it start at? It starts, if I draw a vertical line right here, it starts at negative 2. So x has to be greater than negative 2. And it has an open circle there, so it's greater than, not greater than or equal to. Uh, so any value of x that is more than negative 2, so anything in here, all of these x values here would be okay. So the answer for this one is C. Number 50, what is the value of y in the solution to this system of equations? This can be gra done graphically, where you graph the first equation and the second equation and find the intersection, and you would find a point x, y. You can also use substitution or you could do elimination. In this case, since x is given to be negative 2y plus 9, I'm going to substitute for this x. So I have 6y, replace x with a negative, a negative 2y. So I'm going to replace the x with a minus 2y plus 9. Okay, and that's equal to a negative 59. You see, all I'm doing is I'm replacing the x in the first equation with this right here. This is x in the first equation. So 6y plus x is, it replaces x with minus 2y plus 9. So 6y minus 2y is 4y, and I have plus 9 is equal to a negative 59. And... If I subtract 9 on both sides, I now have that 4y is equal to a negative 68. And if you divide by 4 on both sides, negative 68 divided by 4 is a negative 17. So this is the value of y. And here they're asking, what is the value of y? Make sure that you're solving for the variable that they are asking for. Because if they're asking for x, you have to plug it back into one of these equations. You have to plug y back into equations to find x. So in this case, y is negative 17, and we get this. And if they were asking for x, you'd plug negative 17 back in here. Uh, negative 17 times 2 is negative 30. 34 plus 9 would be 43. So x would be 43. So that means on your calculator, you would get a point x is 43 and y is negative 17. This would be the point of intersection for both lines. And remember, this is x and this is y. So you want the value of y, which is negative 17. G was the correct answer for number 50. Okay, so for number 51, the graph models the linear relationship between the number of monthly payments made on a loan and the remaining balance in dollars left to pay on the loan. Which statement best describes the x-intercept? So the x-intercept here is at 60, so it could be either A or C, but it cannot be B 
or D. Those have the wrong intercepts. So it's 50-50, either A or C. Um, answer C says the x-intercept 60 represents the number of monthly payments needed to repay the loan. And that's what the number of monthly payments to repay the loan, that's what that is. So it should be C. Answer A says the x-intercept represents the initial balance on the loan. That is not correct. So the answer for 51 was C. For number 52, the graph of f of x equals x squared was translated 4.5 units to the left. And so the answer would be, is it f or is it g? Okay, this one cannot be h because that's 4.5 units down and this one's 4.5 units up. So this is going down, this one's going up, that's not correct. We're looking 4.5 units to the left, so it should be something that looks like this, where the original was at the origin like that. So if you graph f, x minus 4.5 squared, that actually moved to the right. If you graph g, so 52g, you notice that it is the correct one. It was translated 4.5 units to the left, and that was the correct answer. For number 53, which graph best represents y equals 5 to the times 1 third to the x power? The 1 third means it's a decreasing, so it should look something like that. So it could be C or D, but it cannot be B, that's increasing. It cannot be A, that's increasing. This is going up, and this is going up, that's increasing. Uh, we're looking for the y-intercept. If x is 0... One-third to the zero is one, and then one times five is five. So that means that your y-intercept, when x is zero, your y-intercept should be at five. It's not going to be this one, uh, but it is this one. So the answer here should be D for number 53. Of course, you can graph this on your calculator and line it up with this one right here. Just make sure you have the, the right y-intercept. The y-intercept was at five. Okay, we're now to the last problem, number 54. What is the solution to this equation? You can use your calculator to solve this. Uh, you can also multiply this out. Negative eight times two m is a negative, negative four times two m is a negative eight m. Negative four times negative seven is a plus 28. And three times 52 is 156. And three times minus four would be minus 12. M. And then what we could do is we could add 12M on both sides. And you're going to have 4M here. And these will cancel out. And you can subtract 28 on both sides. And you're going to have 156 minus 28 is 128. So 4m is equal to 128 divided by 4. And it looks like you're going to get 32. So on your calculator, 128 divided by 4 equals 32. So it looks like the answer should be F. And you should go ahead and check and plug a 32 in here for M. And plug a 32 in here for M and check and make sure it checks and it is correct. So this would be the final one, number 54. Congratulations, you have now finished the Algebra 1 star test from 2021. Congratulations, you've gone through all 54 problems, parts one, two, and three, and uh, reviewing and practicing these problems will make it a lot easier when you see the actual test. It takes review and practice to build confidence and when you build confidence, that leads to success. And I'm sure when you go through this test, uh, when you go through the actual test, you'll experience, um, you'll see some of the problems that you've already seen, and you'll have great success. I wish everybody on this video that's been watching this uh, great success in their STAR test whenever you take it, anytime soon. And remember, if you uh, learn anything new here, make sure you like and subscribe, hit the like button and hit the bell for notifications as I'll be trying to upload some more start tests to help you guys out. 
Thank you very much.